Hello everyone. In this, we will learn about the set interface in Java and its method and properties. This is the agenda for today, where we will see what is set interface. We will see its properties, implementations. We will also check few methods which are available in set and hatch set. We will also see what is initial capacity and load factor. In addition to that, we will see few examples in coding also. So without any further delay, let's start. What is a set interface? So this interface is a part of Java collection framework, which provides the feature of mathematical set in Java. It extends collection interface, which is the main interface on top in collection framework. Unlike list interface, set cannot contain the duplicate values. Now let's see few properties of set. It cannot contain duplicate elements. Single null element is allowed in case of set interface. This is an unordered collection of object. That means any type of order is not maintained in case of set interface. But after that we have like sorted set interface. So in them actually the sorting is done internally that we will discuss later. It is a non-synchronized collection. So that means in multi-threaded environment we have to synchronize it externally to avoid any data related issues. It also supports generic concepts so we can define what type of data we want to store in uh, in the collection so that we can make it type safe. Now let's see where all set interface is extended and implemented. The set interface is extended by sorted set and navigable set. Sorted set behaves like a normal set with the exception that the elements it contains are sorted internally. This means that when you iterate the element of sorted set, the elements are iterated in sorted order. The other one is navigable set. So it provides the feature to navigate among the set elements. It has many methods to navigate the set elements based on our requirement. Then we have these classes which are implementing set interface. Out of these, the most widely used are hash set and tree set, but we also have linked hash set and enum set as well. Now let's see what is a hash set. It is a class in Java collection framework. It implements the set interface. Internally, it is using hash table to store the data. Now let's see how actually the data is getting stored in case of hash set. Hash set internally uses hash map to store the data. Whenever we create a hash set object, one hash map object associated with it is also created. And this hash map object is used to store the elements that we enter in the hash set itself. The elements that we add in hash set are stored as keys for this hash map object. And the values associated to those keys will be some sort of constants or literals. Now let's see an example of hash set declaration, adding an element and accessing the element in code. So as per this code, here we are declaring a hash set which can contain integers whose name is numbers. And after that we have added two, five and six using dot add method here in the hash set. Now there are two ways to print or to see the data which is present in hash set. One is directly using the system.order.println statement. There we can specify directly the reference name itself and it will print the whole hash set. What if we want to iterate through each and every element? So for that we have iterators which are available. So we can get the iterators from the reference of the hash set using numbers.iterator. So it will return an iterator using that iterator we can iterate it through using while loop itself. Now let's discuss two important concepts which are there in case of collection. One is initial capacity and other one is load factor. So what is initial capacity? So it is the initial size which is allocated in hash table for hash set. Load factor is how full the hash set is allowed to get before its capacity is automatically increased. So as it's a part of collection framework, when it is about to getting full, then automatically its size will be increased. So that depends on the load factor. So load factor is nothing but just a percentage of existing size. So suppose it is 0 0.6, that means when the data is completely filled 60% of the existing size then automatically a new hash table will be created of higher size and uh, all the elements will be copied there. 
So as we have seen in our previous example, we have not specified any value for initial capacity and load factor. So by default, the initial capacity of hash set is 16 and the load factor is 0 0.75. That means once the existing 16 size uh, data structure is 75% filled, then automatically the size will be increased how we can define our own initial capacity and load factor so that can be done during the declaration part so here you can see in case of hash set numbers in the constructor call here itself the first argument that we are passing that is the initial size so here we are passing 8 that means this numbers hash set is having initial capacity 8 and the second argument which we are passing is load factor so which is 0.75 which is equivalent to 75 percent most of the methods will remain same as we have already discussed in our previous videos for list and its implementations let's quickly go through a few of them the first one the most widely used is add which is used to add a specific element to the list then we have add all this is used to concatenate two different sets then we have iterator which we have already seen it is used to iterate through uh, all the elements sequentially then we have remove so this specific method remove a specific element we also have remove all so it will expect one set as an argument so what all elements are present in that set all those will be removed from the calling set itself we also have retain all so this will also have one set as an argument so what all elements are present in that argument those will remain in the list all other elements will be removed from the set then we have clear so this method clears all the elements from set we also have size so we will return the to total number of elements present in the set we also have two array method so this returns array containing all the elements of set that means that set which is there it will be converted to the array the standard java array and it will be returned as a standard array then we have contains and contains all these two methods are used to search specific elements or specific subsets in uh, in a particular set then we have this hash code method so this method is actually coming from the main object class this will return the hash code value of the set element using the methods available we can achieve the mathematical set operations as well like union intersection subset etc to get the union of subset a uh, union of set a and b we can use a dot add all b so using add all method we can achieve the functionality of union similarly for intersection we can make use of a dot retain all b so in that case what all common components are there those will be uh, return back we also have subset so if we want to check if b is a subset of a then we can use contains all method so it will return either true or false so if b is a subset of a then it will return true otherwise it will return false let's see these operations in coding as well so this is the code for union implementation so here i have a set set one where two and three is added and I have another set which is set 2 which is having 1 and 2 as an element. So as far, uh, as far as union is concerned as per the law in mathematics the union will be a collection combining both the sets and removing if any duplicate element is there. So in this case the output will be 1, 2, 3 and that can be achieved using add all method. Then we have this intersection code. So here we can make use of retain all as we have seen. So we have two sets. One is prime number and other one is even numbers. So prime number is having two and three and even number is two and four. So in this case, it will see what is the intersection. That means what all common elements are there. The last one we have a code for subset. So subset we can achieve using contains all. So suppose we have a bigger set which is containing 1 2 3 4 and a smaller set which contains 2 and 3 which is prime number so we just want to see if prime numbers is a subset of numbers so that specific method will return either true or false so we are storing it in boolean result so our case we can see 2 and 3 yes it is part of the number set then it will return true now the question is why and when to use hash set. 
in java hash set is commonly used if we have to access the elements randomly because elements in hash table are accessed using hash codes which is getting generated every time hash set cannot contain duplicate elements hence each hash set element has a unique hash code there is one point that we need to consider with high priority so we need to be very careful while using hash set in multi-threaded application as it is not synchronized thus must be done externally if it is not done externally and getting used in multi-threaded environment that can cause data related issues if multiple threads are trying to access and edit the variable values that's it for this video for more such video please do like share and subscribe Thanks for watching. See you next time.